Hi everyone! This tutorial is for making brick wall texture. I used a technique that Tim Holt shared in a demo about distress crayons. You can find his demo in his blog or Facebook page and I highly recommend checking it out because he shows other uses for this technique and so, so much more. Um, this video will focus only on this specific variation. The first step is coloring the paper. I misted the paper with water and then added distress sprays. This way the color moves and you get a smoother background. The colors I used were fried bowl wrap and ground espresso because honestly these are the two browns that I have, um, in sprays anyway. And they work great, but you know, you can use whatever you have. Um, you can also use ink, anything you want, just to get the background uh, to the color you want. Once I'm happy with the amount of color that I have in the background, I will heat set it with um, a heat tool. Um, you can air dry it, I just didn't want to wait, so yep, using a heat tool. Um, and by the way, yes, uh, this is a shoebox that I'm using to protect the work area. Um, I have cats, so everything has to have a lid, and you know, it works really well. Now that the background is ready, we can add the texture paste and the glazes. It's better to have everything ready at this stage, because um, so, you'll need to be a bit quick about it. So you will need um, your background and uh, the stencil. Um, this one is one of Tim Holtz's. It's called Bricked. You will also need uh, the texture paste. I used Ranger's um, Opaque Mate. Um, and then the glazes. Um, I used three colors, the fired brick, fossilized amber and walnut stain, mostly fired brick as you will see. And just to have everything really ready to, um, to do the embossing the moment that I finished stenciling, um, I got the paper for the uh, scattering the glazes and I'm opening the jars. Um, I just want to know that I can put the glazes on the paste the moment that I finish. Um, when it's still completely wet. I don't think you actually need to be that uh, rushed about it, but you know, better th safe than sorry. As you can see, I'm taking a pretty generous amount of the texture paste and just putting it uh, through the stencil. It doesn't have to be that smooth or, or accurate um, or even um, Basically, if you, if you have a few, um, you know, lumps or something, it's okay. It just adds to the texture. But I do try to not have too many or too large uh, lumps because in the end, the majority of the texture actually comes from the glazes. So the texture paste in this case is just serving as a base. Um, so I do want it to be mm, fairly smooth. But, you know, perfect is not necessary. When I'm finished, I'll remove the stencil and I will put it in a water tank that I have off camera. This helps keeping the texture paste wet uh, so you can clean it afterwards. It just makes it easier. Now for adding the glazes. Uh, so I do it in sort of two stages, as you'll see. The first is covering most of the texture paste with um, with the glazes. Um, the first first I use fired brick because this is the main color that I use, and I scatter it rather haphazardly. I want to have some um, areas that are not covered in the red because I, then I can add some yellow spots. Um, I feel that the combination kind of makes this more realistic in the end. As you can see, I also give a pretty good like a few good taps on the back to uh, really um, remove some of the some of the glaze because that creates the pits um, in the end. So now um, I'll add some of the fossilized amber to create um, the yellow areas. Um, and this is really um, this is still kind of a, a stage that I cover big areas. In the next and um, second stage, I will just add little bits, um, just scattering 
uh, with my fingertips a little bit of the glazes here and there in areas that remained exposed um, just to really add a little bit and you can see I add a little bit of walnut stain but really um, a lot of the kind of brown grungy um, effect will be done with the crayons so I'm only just add tins a bit here and there okay so we make sure to cover everything and um, kind of also tap it pretty well um, so you will have um, an uneven texture in the end you can see here a close-up a bit of how it looks um, everything is ready and now for the hard part waiting we need the paste to dry completely because if it doesn't uh, when we melt the glazes it will uh, bubble up and that would ruin the texture that we're aiming for um, it doesn't take as long as it seems and then we get to step three uh, melting the glazes so um, I'm using an embossing tool uh, or embossing gun to melt the glazes and I think you can see in the video that I'm moving pretty quickly so not waiting for um, the glazes to become completely smooth just the moment it melts move to another spot um, because we want this texture um, and in the close-up you can probably see that it's already getting that texture of a brick that we were looking for um, it's still very very shiny <laughs> uh, which we will take care of soon but you can really see all those little pits um, it it looks really amazing so in the next stage uh, we'll now just add the crayons in order to accentuate this texture and um, and really give it that grungy look and uh, now this is this takes some time so I did speed up the video a bit um, but I think you can still see pretty well what I'm doing the main uh, color of crayon that I'm using is walnut stain and I'm using it in two ways one is putting it between the brick lines so uh, really just kind of rubbing it on the edges of the bricks because this kind of puts in um, well, I don't want to say dirt, but it is kind of putting in the dirt uh, between the bricks um, and also really uh, creates a shadowing and brings it up. The other thing I do is rub it on the brick itself because uh, that really brings out all the, um, the little pits, that all the texture that we created with the glazes. Basically, the crayon goes into all the little cavities in the glaze and that brings out the texture. Um, and I'm not sure how much you can see in the video at this point, but the crayon also really dulls the shine of, um, of the glaze. So that also really helps um, making it more realistic looking, really making it look more like brick. Um, okay, so after I'm done with the walnut stain, I go in with uh, two colors, a yellow and a red. Um, I use that to smooth out some um, sharp lines that were created by the glazes in the beginning um, and also to break uh, areas that are just very red or very yellow. Um, I used brushed corduroy because in this stage, well, everything is a bit more brown, so using fossilized amber I felt it was too strong but for the red I do use fired brick and you can see that you can really help uh, smooth everything um, really blend the colors in a more naturalistic way finally I bring uh, just a paper towel and rub a bit at the top this brings out more of the original glaze color uh, and creates more of a contrast here you can see a comparison of before and after the crayon. So on the right you can see um, just the glazes as they're melted and on the left is after we add the crayons. And you can see that okay the 
just the glazes they have the texture already of, of a bit of the brick but it's really shiny and so kind of plasticky looking because that's what they are and um, on the left with the crayons it looks more dull you can see the texture much better it looks much more grungy and much more realistic and that's it um, I hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching